Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and Apple just wrapped up their Apple One More Thing event and introduced us to the first range of Apple Silicon Macs with the new MacBook Air, new MacBook Pro, and even a new Mac Mini all with Apple's custom M1 chip, which is going to offer blazing fast performance while giving us the best battery life we've ever seen in a Mac and with silent, cool performance. Now for this video, I want to focus on the two laptops in the lineup, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, because these are very similar devices with a lot to unpack about how they might be different from each other and what you need to know before you buy this first generation of new Macs. Now, full transparency here, the event just ended. I don't have any of these Macs on hand and there's so much new information here and so many bold claims that most of you should wait for a full review before you purchase any of these first generation Apple Silicon Macs. However, I know there's a lot of you just as eager as me and you can't wait a day longer to hit that order button, let alone a week's time. So I'm going to do my best to give you as much advice and information as I can for the impatient ones out there, but know ultimately that I do recommend you wait for the full review because again, these are first generation products and they might have a lot of bugs or other kinks to work out. Okay, with that out of the way, let's do a quick rundown of what's new in each laptop, starting with the MacBook Air. Now, the first thing you need to know is the MacBook Air has the same design. So from the outside, there's really nothing you can point to as a major change from the older Intel-based MacBook Airs. If you put both of them on a table, you probably wouldn't be able to tell them apart. However, the MacBook Air does get some nice upgrades to the display because now the 13 inch display does get the P3 wide color gamut, which used to be exclusive to the MacBook Pros. The MacBook Air continues to just have two Thunderbolt ports. However, it also has USB 4, which gives the same data speed as Thunderbolt 3 at 40 gigabits per second. And because it's an open standard and won't require Intel's license to use for third party manufacturers, that probably means we will see a wider range of more more affordable USB 4 accessories than what we currently see in the Thunderbolt world. Other than the display and the new ports, that's really the only outwardly facing changes we will see. But the inside of this machine is where we will see radical changes that only is enabled by switching to Apple Silicon. First of all, the MacBook Air now comes with Apple's M1 chip. This chip promises up to 3.5 times faster CPU performance than the previous generation MacBook Air, and up to five times faster graphics performance, and up to nine times faster machine learning. And because of the custom controllers of Apple Silicon, it is going to deliver two times faster solid state drive performance. The M1 chip itself is an eight core design with four high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. Apple says the M1 chip is the fastest CPU that they have ever made. And with that kind of processing speed, the MacBook Air can take on extraordinarily intensive tasks like professional quality editing and action packed gaming. And I'll add that all this extra performance is in a thin and light laptop that does not have a fan inside of it, so it will operate silently and have up to 18, yes, 18 hours of max battery life when playing offline video or up to 15 hours when web browsing. Listen, this Apple Silicon MacBook Air, it just sounds crazy. The fact that it's able to achieve this performance level high enough to edit 4K videos without a fan means it is approaching a level of computing power we just haven't seen on the MacBook Air. And while this might be the computer that usually gets recommended to non-pro users, the performance gains we're seeing with this MacBook Air might actually make it a laptop that even pros can use. I should also note that the MacBook Air does come with Wi-Fi 6 and a better camera image signal processor. Apple says that even though it's the same 720p FaceTime webcam as before, it should deliver better image quality, but I'll have to wait to get one for my full review to see if that's actually true. We also still get the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID built in, so no Face ID incorporated into this webcam. All right, let's move over to the second laptop Apple announced today, the MacBook Pro. 
Now, just like the MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Pro looks exactly the same as its entry-level predecessor. And I should note that the four-port model of the MacBook Pro did not receive an upgrade, with this MacBook Pro only shipping with two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, just like the MacBook Air. So if you're a four-port user like myself, you're gonna be a little disappointed with this design. Again, like the Air, the Pro comes with the Magic Keyboard and Touch ID with no Face ID built in and promises the same webcam improvements through the image signal processor, just like the Air. However, the Pro does come with better microphones. Apple says it uses the studio quality 3RI microphone system, just like we have on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. These are very good sounding microphones and can double as an emergency podcasting or recording microphone on the go. The biggest leap for the MacBook Pro comes in battery life, which is rated at up to 20 hours when watching video. This is double the battery life of the previous 13-inch MacBook Pro. Yes, you didn't mishear me. Literally double the battery life. That is crazy. Now, the real interesting thing is that for the first time, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro will ship with the same exact chip inside of it, the M1 chip. There's no M1X or M2 for the MacBook Pro. So it's going to be interesting to see how the performance might be different between a machine using the same chip. But don't think that there won't be any performance improvements to the MacBook Pro, because unlike the Air, the Pro does come with an active cooling system, meaning that there is a fan inside of the laptop to help it dissipate heat from the M1 chip. This means that the M1 in the Pro should be able to ramp up sustained clock speeds better than the Air, and Apple says that the 13-inch MacBook Pro will have a 2.8 times faster CPU and five times faster GPU than the previous 13-inch MacBook Pro. I should also mention that both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro will not only run macOS apps, but will be able to run iPhone and iPad apps as well, which should mean the biggest library of apps we've ever seen on the Mac. Okay, with that summary out of the way, which one of these laptops should you buy? Well, judging on how well iPads perform, I think the vast majority of you out there are going to want to go with the entry-level $999 MacBook Air. Listen, I know this is the entry-level model and we're used to the MacBook Air having weaker performance in the past, but if Apple Silicon Macs run anywhere near as well as they do on the iPad, then these MacBook Airs should be really capable machines and even have the ability to edit 4K video, which Apple said they will be able to do and you can play games on them as well. It also has zero fan inside of it. So if you need a very quiet workspace, the air is going to make absolutely zero sound. So you'll never ever have to worry about fans whirling up. As for upgrades, well, you can't upgrade the CPU as Apple literally only has one M1 chip. However, you can still upgrade things like the storage or the RAM. For storage, I would recommend getting as much as you can afford right now, especially if you plan to keep this laptop for a while. It starts with 256 gigabytes of storage, which for me is a little low. So I would recommend that most users jump up to to the $1,249 model for 512 gigabytes, if you can afford it. As for RAM, listen, I have no idea how these next generation of apps will run on the Mac with Apple Silicon. However, I think most people will probably be fine with eight gigabytes, but if you do plan on doing professional level apps like video editing, photo editing, coding, 3D modeling, or something like that, I would recommend getting 16 gigabytes. But overall, this Air looks like it will potentially not only be great for entry-level users, but possibly could even be good enough for people to use for professional tasks that the MacBook Air used to struggle at. I'm going to be so interested to see how this machine actually performs. However, there's always going to be people who want more. And if you want the best theoretical performance, well, the MacBook Pro is the one you should get. Now, like I said before, it's the same exact M1 chip. So the performance here is really going to come from the better thermal performance with an active fan inside of the MacBook Pro. Apple said you can edit 8K ProRes video on this 13 inch laptop. And if that is true, it might be even more powerful than Apple's 16 inch MacBook Pro. Besides that, you might also want to get this laptop if you want better studio quality microphones 
Or if you want the best battery life possible in a laptop with this laptop having two more hours than the MacBook Air. Also, the MacBook Pro does have the touch bar if you're into that sort of thing. As for upgrades, the base model at 1300 looks like a good deal if you're fine with 256 gigabytes of storage. Again, I would recommend most users jump up to 512 gigabytes for 1499. And for pro users who store a lot locally on their device like videos or photos, I would recommend spending $200 more than that to get the one terabyte version. For the MacBook Pro, I'm also assuming most of the people who would be getting this are getting it for higher end, more intensive memory apps. So I think it's a safe bet that you should go for 16 gigabytes of RAM, but for the lower end users who just bought this for some of the other improvements, you should be fine with eight gigabytes. Now, all of Apple's Silicon Macs are available today and you can actually go ahead and order them right now. Now, usually I end this video with going over other options and be careful because Apple still does sell Intel versions of the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. Now, there's a big question on software compatibility with these models. However, Apple seems very confident that even with emulation through Rosetta 2, if apps aren't natively updated, they claim that some apps will actually perform better through translation than they would on previous Intel versions. That is a bold claim, one you shouldn't just believe because Apple said it. So if you're worried about app compatibility with older apps, please wait for a full review before you purchase one of these laptops. If you're worried about app compatibility, I still would not recommend buying any of the previous Intel versions, at least before the reviews come out, because it looks like on paper, Apple has not only given us significant performance gains, but better efficiency and battery life gains as well. These first batch of Apple Silicon Macs look like game changers, and I can't wait to test them out. If you wanna see those tests and my future review, make sure you subscribe. If you like this video and found it helpful, please give me a like. Also, be sure to let me know what you think of the new MacBook Pro and MacBook Air in the comments below. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.